When life hands you problems, do you respond with gratitude and grit or grouch and gloom? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. In 1972, NASA launched the exploratory space probe Pioneer 10. According to Leon Jaroff, in time, the satellite's primary mission was to reach Jupiter, photograph the planet and its moons, and beam data to Earth about Jupiter's magnetic field, radiation belts, and atmosphere. Scientists regarded this as a bold plan, for at that time no Earth satellite had ever gone beyond Mars, and they feared the asteroid belt would destroy the satellite before it could reach its target. But Pioneer 10 accomplished its mission and much, much more. Swinging past the giant planet in November 1973, Jupiter's immense gravity hurled Pioneer 10 at a higher rate of speed toward the edge of the solar system. At 1 billion miles from the Sun, Pioneer 10 passed Saturn. At some 2 billion miles, it hurtled past Uranus. Neptune at nearly 3 billion miles. Pluto at almost 4 billion miles. By 1997, 25 years after its launch, Pioneer 10 was more than 6 billion miles from the Sun. And despite that immense distance, Pioneer 10 continued to beam back radio signals to scientists on Earth. Perhaps most remarkable, writes Jaroff, those signals emanate from an 8-watt transmitter, which radiates about as much power as a bedroom nightlight and takes more than 9 hours to reach Earth. The little satellite that could was not qualified to do what it did. Engineers designed Pioneer 10 with a useful life of just three years, but it kept going and going. By simple longevity, its tiny 8-watt transmitter radio accomplished more than anyone thought possible. So it is when we offer ourselves to serve the Lord. God can work even through someone with 8-watt abilities. God cannot work, however, through someone who quits. Today's Gospel reading shows 4,000 people climbing up a mountain along with Jesus and his disciples to have their sick cured by him. He didn't just stay on the shores of Galilee to do this, but asked the people to bring their sick up the mountain, which required much effort on their part. And the reason lies in Isaiah in the reading two days ago. Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain, that he may instruct us in his ways, and we may walk in his paths. And in today's first reading, we begin to understand that a feast awaits us as the Lord of hosts will provide. Our Lord wants to train us in this earthly pilgrimage by going through our own way of the cross uphill, and as in the responsorial psalm, walking through our dark valleys toward verdant pastures and restful waters. Perhaps this is the reason why the crowd had dwindled from the 5,000 that followed him in one of his walks to around 4,000 this time. Oftentimes, when we encounter difficulties, trials, and tribulations, we can easily give up. In the secular world, we can abandon our great ideas, our job hunting, our business ventures, our studies, our wooing of the woman we pine for, our friendships and relationships. We end up wretched and hopeless. In our quest to follow Jesus, our effort to serve Him in our parish or renewal community suddenly loses steam when people backstab us, when we are not appreciated or recognized, when our suggestions and ideas are rejected, when our efforts have created enemies, serving becomes a burden and our initial reaction may be to flee or to fight, but in both, our joy vanishes and we disintegrate. Following Jesus is not easy. Carrying our load, be they our lame, our blind, or our crippled, up the steep hills of life requires much from us, but this is precisely what Jesus wants us to do. Jesus tells us to bring with us those who are as lame, as blind, and as crippled as us, up to where our mountaintop experience will reveal to us a feast like no other. God will use our challenges and the difficult people around us to make us realize that His grace alone can give us the same compassion and love, the same grit and perseverance of Jesus to reach the apex of our goal, holiness that exudes a peace and joy that an exhilarating and glorious mountaintop experience provides. Once we realize, appreciate, understand, and dwell on this most precious gift of grace, even in our nothingness, in our minuteness, with even our 8-watt capabilities, we can travel to the far reaches of existence to meet Him eventually for an eternal feast in His heavenly abode. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, accompany me in my hardships 
so that with effort on my part and with grace coming from you, I will be confident and assured of reaching the peak of eternal happiness with you. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.